Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're gonna continue on this, I don't even know what year it is, Solex Moped, uh, made in France. A uh, subscriber hooked us up with it. It was in, I wanna say his mother-in-law's garage uh, against the back wall since 1978 in a wet garage. We have one video under our belt actually on this machine, and it was kinda like going through the engine and trying to get it to run. It had no spark fuel issues, all the typical stuff of it sitting around. So we were able to get it to run and it uses a kicker wheel in the front. Let's see if it does without making it fall over. So inside that motor in the middle, there's a kicker wheel that drives that front tire. And that's also how you would start it. We've been starting it with a drill and uh, don't have any good tires for it. You can see both of them are rotted out. And shipped directly from France couple of correct tires that are for it. They're an oddball size and uh, none of them were available in the good old USA. So we've got a set of tires, set of tubes. That'll get that part of it functioning for us. It's probably been a good six or seven months uh, since we last kind of played with this project. So it's going to be fairly new to me and probably half of you guys also, unless you just saw the, the previous video. It does need lots of love. We're not going to be able to restore this to, you know, painting and all that. But my goal is just to try to get it to ride around. Get a little bit at that chain. You can see how bad, how rusty the back wheel is. That kind of stuff. So let's go try carrying the torch. <laughs> <laughs> a little further and see if we can get it to that point hopefully uh without further ado let's go get her stuck in the wheel chuck in the front maybe we'll try firing it up one more time and make sure that the engine is doing what it's supposed to be doing and then we'll kind of reminisce and uh, continue from there Like I said, it's been like seven months since we played with this thing and I don't recall much of anything that we did. We got a bunch of parts stored in the back that we took off of it. Get rid of them. Let's see. Had a set of paper baskets on it. And possibly set up for two passenger. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, let's go get ourselves a drill and put it on that bolt right there. We'll try to spin it up. We'll see if we get the fire up again. Probably should look, see if there's gas in it. And uh, there is a tad bit, as long as that's below the, the pickup, which I think it is. I think it screws in from the side. I think that's actually it. A little nipple sticking out. Maybe we'll put a little bit more in it. I remember it seemed like the throttle was backwards. Like, so this is the throttle. I think that up was idle and down was full throttle. Not sure of that, but let's go give her, got a choke lever. So it's to that side. That's kind of idle. That seems like it's true. And then to shut it off, you got a decompression lever. Well, good. Everything still works. I spun the nut off. <laughs> off the flywheel. Good thing we didn't lose it. All right. So what would you like to screw around with next? Maybe we should just try to get tires underneath it and opening them up. I think a lot of the bicycle stuff we could probably cheat and steal off of like, if there's something broken, we could take it off of, um, you know, regular bicycle things. Let's get the front one done because that's the one we need to kick. It's a kicker wheel. Where's the light? So it has a kicker wheel. Right there, and that's what drives against the tire. But of course, the tire's flat, so nothing's happening with that. And there, I don't know what the front one, but the back one, you could see through it. So, they weren't gonna <laughs> do very much force. Let's go uh, get it spun around, we'll get that front tire off of there. 
you know, trying to get caught up on some of the projects that are, you know, the easy, easy part starting a project, hard parts is uh, kind of moving forward with them, getting <laughs> to fruition. And especially we got to order parts like the, I think the tires I missed took like three weeks to come in, of course. So it gets pushed to the back. Put the pile of parts with it. I got to tighten this side up to get the other side to loosen up. And then something else comes in that you want to go play with. You know, come on, you do the same thing. One guy saying no. I'm gonna free up. Come on. Oh. The whole shaft's trying to spin on us, so. Is it the wrong? Do I have to go the other way? I wouldn't think so. Kind of goofy there, reverse threads. I'm gonna have to take a wire wheel. And. The whole uh, post is spinning. Let's go take a wire wheel, clean some of the crap off of there, and see if we can maybe get a little bit of penetrant. See which way it's going. Possibly it's reverse the red. I don't think so, though. Just run your fingernail in you know, on the threads and see if you bind up on it. Yeah, so it's regular thread. Just tight. Put up this much fight on the front wheel. I'm measuring the back one's gonna be like, that one's a mess. Alright, let's see if we'll go. Maybe we could try impact. The whole thing's spinning. Let's go throw an impact on it. Yeah, it's spinning the whole thing out. <laughs> Let's go tighten up the other side. Did it go? <laughs> Close enough. At least now we can kind of get the um, little bit of lube behind it. a little lock ring on the valve stem. Those are good for like when it goes totally flat and it doesn't allow the valve stem to get pulled in. See what our rim looks like. Not bad. Let's um chuck it up in something. We'll spin it. See if we have to do any uh, dialing in of being, you know, kind of like that. Actually, let's take the guts out of it first because that one is still seized up on there. I got to do the bearings anyway. I want to go spin it. it feels really kind of crusty. There should be another GM nut inside there. Yeah, they're kind of cruddy. Let's get that backed off. I don't think that's going to be a 14. That's going to be a, I think that is like a 17. Seventeen for the win. Looks like it's got a little C-clip holding it. Never seen that before. Losing my balls. 
apparently they're not in a cage. So we're gonna go pop all them out and wash all that, clean it out. I'm gonna probably clean up the rim too while we get it apart. So now I'll be able to take this, stick it in the vise, and we can spin this nut off that's all bound up over there. If we have to, we'll throw a little bit of heat on it. toasty I leave those right on there we'll just clean it up with a wire wheel The rim is really crusty. It's never going to come back to chrome or anything, but let me do my best to hit it on the wire wheel and knock off some of the external stuff that is on it. I don't put the spokes either. Could always paint them black if you wanted to. Yeah, so one downfall about wire wheels that are on a bench grinder is that try doing something big like that's good for like doing threads but if you have to get in there and uh, get a decent amount of area the guard gets in the way so we'll fix that I actually have a couple of uh, old buffers in the background I'm gonna try to get a bigger wire wheel for one of them and leave it on they're exposed all the way around You hear it is naked, the idea it can get all the way around it. You just gotta be very careful and uh, make sure you don't get sucked into it. <laughs> and the little bristles come whipping out at you. That's why the guard's on there. But take one of those off. Well, far from perfect, but definitely a lot better than what it was. Let's goober up the hole. Lube your hole. Keep your balls from falling out. <laughs> I think it's the opposite, but let's go pack that with grease. You get nine per side. And I have a feeling I'm probably going to drop a couple down through the center. Should we put that? We feed, feed that up through the bottom. Would that help us? And what we'll do is we'll feed it up. Just so if they do fall out, we don't lose them totally. You know what I mean? See if we got enough room to drop them in around it. Uh oh, I got a runner. Keep your eye on the ball when you drop it. Jeez. 
two more. If we get them packed in there, we should be able to lift this right off and flip it over. Not losing any. Good. And that should lock itself on there. Let's go throw a little bit on there. Okay, a little more than a little bit. Should lock them into place. Do the same on this side. One more. Give me make room, guys. There we go. Let's give her. Less is more, more is less. More is more. And that's that that's actually the race right there that the outer spins on those are the two surfaces that really need to be clean is that right there and then the opposite it should just spin right on being the fact that i did a nice job cleaning the threads and we can set the play which is just enough that um not getting any binding on the wheel the uh, the, the rim is touching the um let's um set it on the threads that in back it up a hair it's pretty good right there then we're gonna run a GM nut down on that we got to get a little tiny flat wrench on there to keep that from backing off actually we need that little c-clip don't we isn't that what stopped us yeah that way I don't think we have to put a wrench on that one because that little c-clip will work as a washer So 17 millimeter, I think. And then I think these go on, right? Is that right? Or is it before or after? Yeah, that's correct. Go tighten that down. We'll throw those little dust caps on them. I'll pack those dust caps with grease too. And then we'll flip it on and then we'll see how it is from side to side. Kind of just see what we got for spoke tension. When I was cleaning it up, I really didn't feel any that were flopping. So that's pretty good. All right, let's go flip it on the bites and see how wobbly it is. There we go, I pinched in the vise. Well, look at that lip right there compared to the side of the bench. Get your uh, head out of the way of the spokes. It actually looks pretty good. I don't see much tweaking to go do. The front doesn't take as much hammering as the back though. I think we'll leave that one alone. We'll just throw the tire on it. Hey, right, so you want the good news or the bad news? Good news, the tire fits awesome. The bad news is the tube, <laughs> it's uh, I think the tire's like a 24, but it's like a, I don't know what to call it, a metric, a different scale of 24. So the tube that came with it is about two inches too long. So it's bunched up in a couple of locations. I don't know what it's gonna do. Let's go find out. I'm just kind of eyeballing the, um, the seam that's going around. I'm trying to make it like that little line that's exposed, kind of even. Let's 
go give her a spin. See, she's lumpy. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a kick to it. Oh well. Actually better than I thought. All right, let's go look back at the bike. See if there's anything to clean up before we throw this back on. Fortunately, it comes on and off real easy now. I don't see anything to go do inside that motor. I think we just throw it on for now. We'll kind of see what we got as far as like the brakes and all. Well, the wheel doesn't fit on there now with the tire filled up to go around the brakes. And I went to go grab the lever for them. And nothing is working. <laughs> so let's go look into that. Let's go get, I guess it looks like this little cover out of the way here. We'll see how the mechanisms work. It's got some kind of a adjustment on it there. So it's like a couple of 10 or nines. It seems like nine millimeters the uh, the go-to on this. Let's see what we got. See if it moves at all just by squeezing it. Hmm. So where does that cable go? It looks like it goes to this little cam here. You gotta push it in maybe to turn it. Yeah. So that's the adjustment. Let's go back that off a little bit. Let's see if the cable even pulls it all. Yeah, the cable's not doing anything. So let's go figure out where it goes and what it does. Can we take this out? Let's go take this bolt out right here. You know, I figured out why this doesn't do anything, why it's not working. <laughs> Did you figure it out? Because it's going to the rear brake. <laughs> Where's that going? That goes up here to a cam. So, ah, there we go. So this is throttle and brake. Ah! <laughs> this is throttle and brake. So you squeeze it to stop, right? Yeah, it's locking it up. That is so weird. That to make the throttle go, uh, to idle is like that, to ride is like that. What a strange, what a strange, strange world this is. <laughs> All right, now that that kind of makes a little bit of sense. I'm just going to take a little bit of time. Uh, let me go clean up those linkages, free them up. It looks like the one on this side is not doing as much as the other one is. And uh, we'll try to get all that working. Uh-huh. Let's go give it a little bit of a bath while it's all apart. Part to Watson solution. Those covers are off. Hey, look, it's even got a pinstripe in there. Who'd have, who'd have thunk? So I'm gonna go spend a few minutes to go do some of that. Get up inside the fender, hit the muffler, all that kind of stuff. There we go. That's on there. Let's see if we can dial those brakes in. Probably back where it was, right? It seems like this side doesn't want to back off. It actually looks like the brake shoe is hitting the fork, not allowing it to back off. Why this side has clearance and this side doesn't, I don't know. I wonder if it's bent up a little bit. It's not catching by much. That movement right there. 
I'm going to eyeball the other side, see if there's a difference between the two of them. See if we can figure out, if we can tweak this guy a little bit that way. Plus, you got to figure it too, right? When you're riding, it's constantly trying to draw up into there. But that's no good. Looks like the bracket it's sitting on is spread out. Let's see if we can, um, if that'll give us enough if we loosen it up. Draw them both back together. What do you mean, like this one's outside those, those little pinholes there? There's like little detents on it that holds it. So we can get that to pull away a little. We just slide that right off the edge. There you go. And yeah, there's like little detents on there that's captured on the wrong side. I don't know if we could take them and kind of take this one and give her some influence back. What was it like? How was it? Was it like that or like that? <laughs> <laughs> you remember? Take a look at the other side. To the rear, because that's what that cover bolts to, I think. So we need it. And there's something like that. I'm going to hit it with a hammer. Yes, I do. Keep hitting you, fat head. There we go. And then tighten that up. I wonder if that, do you think that should be on the other side and kind of, if it's drawn up against there, I think that should be on the other side. Because what's to stop it when you hit the brakes? You know what I mean? Like a rub surface. Kind of take it right off. I think it's probably supposed to be like that. And that's supposed to rub. Yeah, so the other side is wrong then. Because the other side has this facing out. So I'm going to go take a little bit of time. I'll set them up like that. And if I grease up that little pad right there and give it something to rub on. And we'll see how it returns. Yeah, there's that other side. See what it means? It's faced the wrong way. That's supposed to be on the front of it so that when the tire's going and you hit the brakes, it has something to support it and it doesn't. So it's allowing it to kind of get sucked into the wheel. That looks better. We definitely got it much better. It's kind of doing what it's supposed to, but it, it's racking to that side. I, I got to try to figure out how to make it favor I was playing with tightening these down on each side, and it, that, that just kind of makes drag on the whole assembly. But it still um, only favors the one side, you know? At least the, the little brake pads are doing what they're supposed to be doing, thrusting against that. But I don't know how to make it want to, you know, favor one side of racking. I don't know if we could take that spring. Can we move that spring? Doesn't look like it, does it? You know, kind of give more spring on one side than the other. Yeah. I was thinking like maybe those two bolts, you know, they looks like they were cams or something that made it, we can favor it. I actually think what it is, is the cable itself. I bet you it's kind of pushing. What if we turn the wheel the other way? See if it favors the other direction. Does it help it? Yeah. I gotta figure out a way to make it just wanna stay like that. Any suggestions? I'm open. Actually, it looks like it might have two springs. It's got an internal one too. Yeah, nothing, nothing's fixed. It looks like it's just kind of meant to 
Does that cover do anything for us? Where's that cover? What do you think? You think that? Yeah, it's like it. I wonder if um. Just has to come off of it a hair. I'm gonna go throw those, those uh, two nuts back on this and we'll see if it makes any difference. Or I wonder if we can, um, maybe we can adjust it enough. So if that side of that lever hits the cover, it'll allow the other one to come out. If we back off the tension a little, it might do it. Yep, I think we're onto something. So I backed that off to get like a happy medium and not touching a little <laughs> where the dent in the room is but and that's with the, no the knob all the way in and that's going to be idle so you want to break and idle at the same time if we give it a hair more room it doesn't touch and we can hit the lever to idle kind of weird that both of them are the same huh Dang. good <laughs> we'll leave that alone we got we're gonna call that uh, good for the wind. All right, what else do you want to? Uh, I'm mean, gonna go clean handlebars up. Let's. Um, I know we got the back S N to do. Let's go look into finishing up, like the engine assembly and the front wheel. Um, I wonder if that's a ground wire. To uh, I don't know if that's for the horn or for um, a kill switch. Let's go hook up. See how that decompression works. We got a lever here. I don't know if it just goes up in this. And I see a tab. Kind of weird, huh? Let me go pop you in the stand. All right, so for it to have decompression, you have to pull up on it. Opens the valve. If we were in that hole, it's kind of backwards, isn't it? Let's put that together. So it's got a, it's got a, like a, a button on it. It kind of makes sense that like, that's how, hmm, which you would want to, I don't know if you put, well, you push down, it's just going to fall off, right? Yeah, so pulling up on it is decompression. Also gonna be for starting it too, I would think. You'd be able to get the engine up to speed and you, you dump it and it's allowed to go. I would guess, judging by the brakes, that that's put together wrong too then. What do you think? What's the thoughts on that? We were to take this whole assembly, if we flipped it over, It still seems like this, you would push your thumb. It's meant to push your thumb on it though, right? Not like come up underneath it. Hmm. Let's contemplate on that a little bit. All right, so I looked up a part for what a decompression lever would be. And it looks nothing like that. <laughs> it's kind of like a lever that flips to the side. Kind of like um, uh, thumb throttle on like a snowmobile or something. You would go like that with it to the side. Whether that could be enough to work that, I don't know. Still seems kind of weird. I wonder if we can kind of come up with something maybe a little bit better. Uh, I just ordered the right one. I think it's like six, eight bucks, but the problem is it's gonna take three weeks to get here again also. So that's the idea. We twist it to the side and it pulls up and kills compression. I mean, we'll leave that for now. I'm gonna bend that little tip over so it has a little bit more bite to it. So it and it doesn't fall out on us. I'll leave that alone. We we'll probably put like some of the covers back together on the front now. I'm gonna do that. So it's essentially it's got like just two or three pieces to put on. One's like a headlight cover, but it also steers around the fins and then there's a cover. Well, this guy right here that kind of directs the air across the cylinder head from here. When we look at the headlight wiring, Trying to figure out what we got going on. So it has the headlight with a wire going to here. And then it has, looks like a post touches this. So this should be the ground side of it. 
and then it's got a lever on it right there that spins. And my guess is that what does that line up with? That lines up with that post right there. Maybe just touches that post and creates power to it. But what's that? <laughs> Where's that go? I wonder if that is. Let's see if we can follow it. Well, we got one going to a horn from here and one coming up. I wonder if this is for the tail light. Yeah, I bet you that runs all the way through the frame. It goes back to that tail light. So that would have to pick up hot also. So this is, this would be the hot. How would that attach to it? Is it attached to the cover? Is it attached to that anywhere? On the end of it right there? Hmm. I'm waiting for an answer. <laughs> Let me know. That's my guess is that we have to try to get that wire attached. All right, so where does this one go? This one goes up around to the horn. This is probably the ground for it. Yeah, so that grounds the horn. Makes it beep. So this is the hot side. It's probably power for everything. So power there. That's got a power wire that already runs to the rear. This might be, I don't know, ground for the headlight, uh, tail light. I'll tell you what, we'll take it, we'll wire it to the side for now. And we'll see what does and doesn't work. I'm worried about the latest. Like somebody goobered up a bunch of tape on it too. Keep it out of harm's way. And we'll throw those covers on there. All right, all that stuff's kind of back together, kind of, sort of. And I think that seems kind of good the way that switch makes contact. And it's like air just kind of blows out across and gives it a general breeze. A lot of engines have it where it's, um, that's in the wrong spot. It's gotta be there. Um, it kind of goes around the jug. It does a better job of cooling. Uh, where do these go? You're so smart. <laughs> Where were they? It's kind of like a, um, a basket case that I caused myself. I don't know what they would um, have attached to. What did they... Kind of seems like something that would have just locked something down. I don't see it being this, any kind of spring for the front fork tension. They have their own built-in springs right down, down in there. I loop them up so that the tire kind of... You know, drops down on it. Kind of looking for like some, something sticking out somewhere that we can attach to. I put this guard back on too. So it was the guard and just the, um, the center headlight and the cover on the other side. We still have that wire hanging free. I wonder if you want to try to uh, start it with just like maybe spinning the wheel. Let's see if it'll do it. Let's give it a shot, see what happens. So we need to touch in the tire. You gotta push on it a little bit. Do we need throttle or anything? It should be full throttle, right? Yeah. Let's go give it. <laughs> I don't Gotta take it out of gear though. 
brakes are coming on, but they're going to fight them. Let it run. You got a headlight? Nah. Got no horn. Look at her go. <laughs> Probably about 15 mile an hour, if you might guess. I wonder if we can adjust that air fuel mix a little to get out that four stroking. I hope there's an adjustment on it. Let's grab a light. <laughs> Definitely burn off all the crap. So everything kind of seems like it functions. Again, I don't think it's any kind of resource, that's for sure. Let's um pop that cover off so you get that wire straight, make sure the plug is tight and all that kind of thing. I don't know if it's got any more RPMs in it than that. Loose. Let's see if there's anything we need to do in there. Is that tight? Yes, it is. It just seems to be kicked over. To that location. I wonder if that was kind of screwing up the decompression valve too. Seems like we need to get a little, just a hair more out of it. Eh, it's enough to kill it. I don't know if we have any kind of air filter or anything in there that is serviceable. I need like just like a sponge in there. I don't see any way to take it apart though. Does it come? Can we? Uh, Maybe we did that in the first time. <laughs> uh, so, I guess the idea is kind of, you kind of want it simple, right? You don't want it where it's super difficult to work on. I mean, <laughs> A zillion of these things. Let's go try and fire it up again. I think um, that wire may have been kicking that cover back a little bit where this lever wasn't able to come up all the way. Yeah. Let's go try it again. You need to do anything? Just spin the tire? <laughs> <laughs> I would think you probably would pull a decompression valve too and get it going, then release it. Let's uh snagger down a little.
guess that's when you come to a stoplight, that's what you do. That bulb should be no good too. Okay, we got nothing. That one to get burned out and melted right through it. Horn's working now. Was, did. Nah, I did it. Work for a second. <laughs> so we must be making power. <laughs> At least we're making power because that wouldn't have um, beat the horn if not. Yeah, definitely cooking myself. I'm sure we're not supposed to be sitting still with the thing neither, you know. We're supposed to have a breeze kind of going into it. It's warm, but it's not like stupid warm. Huh. Yeah, a lot of it's just wearing off the muffler, all the, the crap that's on it. All right, what do you want to do next? <laughs> I think um, we definitely have a direction of something that needs to be addressed is this mess that's in the back here. Let's get rid of this basket. I'm not going to use this anyway. Let's get this off of here. Maybe that out of the way. My guess is this is like a little glove box. Do we ever open this? It's like a little tool kit, right? Come on. Any prizes? Piece of sponge. Yeah. <laughs> Everything you need to working your saw locks when it breaks. Is that a little head gaskets? Check that out. This is a, talk about having everything you need, huh? Right with you. Is it common to blow head gaskets? It's the intake manifold. It's your rebuild kit. What's that? What do you think that is? Anything else? Some foam, oh there's a nut. Some foam that went to dust, and I think that's it. It's got the name of the, uh, my name means I'm gonna hit them on a wire wheel, clean them up real quick. Heat's on, winter time. We were in a, uh, we hit 50 degrees every day, 50, 55, and last night it was 19. Winter's not over yet. Baskets remind me of having a uh, paper route. I was talking with my uh, my parents over the holidays. Remember, I had a paper route, but uh, apparently I was younger than what I, I think she said I was nine, <laughs> and I had like a nine, ten, eight, something like that. And I had a bicycle, kind of you know the same idea as this, and you had baskets on each side. throwback. Sunday sucked. Sunday was like all the heavy papers. Get out of there. Look down the floor, I saw that cage laying over there. I go, maybe that's what those little brackets were for to hold that in place. Let me go clean this up on a wire wheel. I'll throw this back on the front, little front bumper setup. All right, do you think it goes like that? Or do you think I gotta flip it over? Kinda looks right. But then again, if you flipped it over, it would have like the notch going around the headlight, maybe protecting it. Let's go try it the other direction. See if it uh, even fits. My guess is that one maybe looks more correct. Both of them, I was like, well, there's a mark on the fender, but both of them touching that same place. I don't know if those little springs that we had, did they like mount to it to make it like the whole tension on it in one direction? I see a hole there to, wouldn't think that would just be kind of allowed to flap around like that, would you? Never know. 
All right, enough getting sidetracked. Let's go finish what we were doing in the back here. Let's get, um, I think this thing's just going to turn to dust if we try to use it. It's, the foam is gone on the inside of it. Plus, I don't think it's a factory setup. I don't know about this, though. It's the right color. I'm missing a bolt there. Can we take that whole rack right off of there? We got to get the back tire out of it anyway. I don't know if it'll clear the back fender. The wheel's got to go forward, so we should be able to clear that. Let's go set it up where the uh, ass end is up in the air, and that's back in the chuck again. I think the chances are that pedal's going to even move. <laughs> and so this one's going to be the, the back brake. Yeah. It looks like it's got a brake drum internally in on it. Let's get rid of this. The name is on that. Denfield. That sure doesn't really look like it's from the factory. There's only one of them anyway, so it's not even like it's useful. Let's get rid of that and see if we can get that tire and wheel assembly out of there. We gotta get the chain off, get that soaking. Yeah, this eye wasn't even hooked up. The bracket going up to the to the rest. Not gonna have it. It's got a square drive on the back. I don't know if I can get something on that. A square nut. It seems like it was made for it. It has a little kick stand that grabbed off the frame to help keep it from swinging. But again, only one. I don't even think that fender's attached anywhere in the front. Let's, um, I want to get the, I want to get this off of here. I'd rather have it with the rack. I don't know if we can, um, get to the hardware though. This fender has to come out of our way. Let's, uh, the wheel's gotta come out anyway. We gotta get that brake assembly. So no matter what, we gotta get the wheel off. So let's go concentrate on that. So we got a cable coming up. Yeah, it's got two set. What's that? What's the chain going to? And what's that? <laughs> what's that lever? What does that do? What's it supposed to do? Let's go squeeze the lever. So that does, but I don't know what that does. Maybe that's like an adjustment for the brake, more or less. Kind of like how that front had that little cam set up that you could turn. Maybe it's kind of the same idea. All right, what can I do to get that out of there? Can we just lift that barrel up and out without taking it off? I'd like to. Yeah, let's see if we can pop that right out of there without having to undo that. That cable doesn't look like it's going to uh, defray itself and go back on. Let's see if it'll go. Yeah. Come on. There you go. That was easy. It's got two got wires going back. That's for the tail light. Let's just take the two bolts. We'll loosen them up, see if the wheel will come out. Well, we're going to run into the same problem as the front. The whole thing spins. That's that one. Good. I expected a more fight than that. I see um, there's like a tab up in here though. That's to keep, I guess, the wheel from spinning. I'll show you, you can't see it from here. There's a tab right there. So we gotta be able to drop out. And that has to be able to drop out. It's just when you hit the brakes, it doesn't spin the whole hub. How do we get that out of there? Hmm. Hmm. Kind of cruddy. I think we just kind of maybe tap on it a little bit and see if it frees itself up. Just shake the Jesus out of it. 
should be able to do this on the side of the road. So. There it goes. Yep. The spring is still caught. There we go. Yeah, that spring's got the wire. Good. Hmm. I don't know if we need to crack that open, we'll give her a spin and see how it does. Right. Was that the brake lever right there? Right? Yeah. That's the brake shoe set up. Let's uh, start disassembling uh, this like we did the front one. And we'll clean the wheel all up and do all the, you know, get rid of all that crap. <laughs> I don't know if I want to see too much on that one. We end up going right through it. Let's get the tire off. Get that valve stem out. Get the big pliers for that. Let's um, see if we can crack open that brake drum. I want to look in there, see what we got anyway. I wonder if those, both of those springs are supposed to go there and the other one just fell off. Bet you both of those are supposed to go there. Remember how they go? Because I won't. See if we can unbolt this setup right here. Grab the impact gun. That it? Yeah. Oh, look at the cute little brake shoes. <laughs> so that was like that with the nut on top. Let's go feel. Bearings are really clunky. Yeah, let's go grab that with a pair of ice grips and we'll spin it. But I think we got to disassemble this one too and get to the bearings. How's the brake shoe? A little rusty, but I don't I don't see it being funky in any sort. Brake shoes aren't falling off of it. Get that apart. Going in deeper. I mean. At least the threads aren't boogered up on this one like the other one. I don't know if that is a, same as that front one there, like some kind of clip. Or is that threaded? I think that'd be like a washer, wouldn't it? Yeah. That. And then I think we got to spin this one all the way off too. I wish we would get to the bearings. Kind of looks like a, almost like a seal bearing in there. Like it's, it's got its own cage with that. Maybe not. We'll find out in a second. They all piss out when we take it apart. Stacking these pieces up, you know how they came. All right. Let's see what happens. They can even come out. There we go. Yeah, they're dropping out the other side. Yeah, just as cruddy. All the grease has turned into a hard, uh, <laughs> like a tar. So we'll go clean all that crap up. I'll pop the bearings out. We'll do the same as what we did with the front. Hopefully, not lose any. 
as they're leaking their way out. And I'll uh, do the same with the rim. We'll clean the rim up on the wire wheel. Make some dust. Let's see if we can get inside there, maybe with uh, one of these. A little spread out for us enough. We even smash into my hand. That's got it. All right, I'm gonna go clean up those surfaces in there. How bad that is, huh? Good thing it's like a double wall. This is uh, another side on air, which isn't all that much better. <laughs> They'll put that tire tube pressure up too much. Good thing it only does 20 miles an hour. So my concern is with this rust is, although we have the beam that kind of goes over and covers the spokes, that that's going to pop the tube. So I wonder if maybe we can get some electrical tape on those, just where those bad spots are. Might make the tire shift a little bit too though, because you kind of like where the bead is. Let's go see. I think it's going to hurt for us. Then we'll, then we'll put the other piece over the top of it, you know, just to kind of give us like a Safety lever, safety level, lever. We have more to do too. Let's see. Eyeball it around. Yeah, I think we got it. Those look like little factory dents. Those are those are pinched in. I'm not gonna worry about those. All right, now we got our spoke protector. Just put that right back where it was. Where's the hole? I'll just throw that back on. Put the tire and the tube back on. Fill it right. pretty good. Actually better than the front. Minus those rust holes. We won't talk about them. Yeah, before we throw that wheel on, let's get, I think actually you don't have to take a massive link out. I think we can probably sneak that chain right out of there. Emma, there you go. <laughs> 
it. <laughs> I don't think it's actually supposed to uh, be able to support itself straight across. Uh, I'm going to go hit this on a wire wheel and uh, maybe we'll soak it in some oil or something overnight. We'll kind of clean up the rest of this. We go hit that on a wire wheel and if it doesn't come back, I'll go get another one. I don't think it's terrible. I'm trying to find any links that are like really welded right there. Right there. That's the bad spot. It's probably where we're facing down low. Let's clean it up. I got cleaned up on the wire wheel. And we'll just go soak that in gasoline. We'll try to do its thing and we'll, we'll bring it back later. Let's um, jump onto the pedal crank. What we got for. Eh, it's got a little bit of drag to it. I really don't feel like taking that apart. <laughs> now let's go, um, oh, the pedals, other than the cobwebs that are on them. I think we could probably just shoot oil in them. I don't think we're going to be doing, it's not like a bicycle, we're going to be riding it. Let's go shoot some oil back in behind there and see if that kind of frees up a little bit more than that. Let's try some brake clean first, see if we can like rinse out any crap that's in there. I would figure it's kind of the same as the, um, you know, the wheels that just the, the grease gets all. Oh, the pedals. It's getting better too. And so we'll rinse, we'll rinse that out a little bit and then we'll just shoot oil in there. Sometimes these can be a bear to get apart. Do more damage than good. Then we'll probably get a, a wire wheel. We'll clean up the rust. It's just very light oil. It feels pretty good. Probably should have cleaned it first, huh? Butter. Oh, how long your eyeballs were dirty. You need a good cleaning. Yeah, conjunctivitis. All right, see about getting that fender, that pad out of there. It looks like it's just a bracket that goes across. I don't know if it's bolted through it or not. Yeah, I think um, if we could lift this whole thing right up out of the way, we probably have better access to it. What's holding it? There's one bolt to the fender, and that should allow us to, to pitch that whole thing up, and maybe we'll get that off of there. I'm not sure about this, though. I don't know if that's factory or not, or is that's, that might be part of this cushion. Actually, what is that hurting? I know the condition of it's crappy, but... You know, it's not hurting anything, but we just leave it alone. We'll wash all the parts up. I'll do my best to, um, I'm going to scrub all the frame. Get rid of, you know, whatever we can on it. And we get it ready to get the, the wheel back on. There's really no reason to take that off. Could always take it off in the future, too. Soak it down. Brings the shine right back, doesn't it? Slip off the seat. Yeah. So 
smells good. It's coral. It's meant to break rust free for nuts and bolts. Why not on the finish, right? Let's soak overnight, so I'm also at the handlebars too. That rust. And grips. Everything. Kind of scotch bright stuff up. It's a patina ride. It's an excuse for not painting something. It's a patina. I don't want to get rid of the patina. Hey, Lebec. It's actually a few days later because uh, we had a storm come through and ripped the uh, power off the building <laughs> and my house. So it kind of screwed things up a little bit. Anyway, um, it's like the oil is actually kind of soaked in pretty good. But I'm, I'm going to run around with a Scotch Bright. We'll hit that, you know, especially up around the handlebars where all the rust was. Uh, you, know, you see it kind of like, seemed like it did a little something for it. So we'll go hit that. Let's go look at the chain. That was thrown in gas. Looks like. Most of that's evaporated. Let's go take that out of there and see if it's got any free, any freed up, any freed up, freed up. Road. Fishing. Definitely took a lot of dirt off it. That's just some muddy looking bowl there. Much better. It's like a little kinky, little kinky, <laughs> little kink right there. That'll probably work out. Let's go run it all the way around. Right there, a little. I think that'll work itself out. Probably just work by hand a little. Hit it with a torch. <laughs> yeah, one link. I think we'll get get that one freed up right there. She'll go. One way or another, she'll go. Good. All the mud that came out of that. Something in there, one bolt. How about we kill it with fire? Which one is not moving? That one. If we hit it with oil, it'll suck it right in. We're catching on fire. <laughs> it smells good. There we go. Now they're moving. Never say can't. We can squeeze that back in there. You get it started, it should be okay.
think it'd be easy just to take that guard off, but it's got a bunch of hardware holding it. It's part of the frame. Yeah. Nice. That went back on way too easy. Something's wrong. <laughs> I ended up fighting so much to take that apart the first time. Well, we got it all back together. I changed out a couple little pieces of hardware for, they had like uh, smaller screws in, in these locations. So I kind of tightened them up a little bit with jam nuts on the back of them. Left the backrest on. I don't think there's a reason to take that off. I don't think it's usable, <laughs> but we left it off. I still don't know what this lever is for, what that would be used for. It's kind of sistering the line and why it has this little cam and a chain going to it. Like a I don't know, like a parking brake or something? No, I, I, you think it's a brake light switch? There you go. And yeah, there's a switch back in here. So this, when you pull the cable, yeah. So the brake light's on all the time. And I would have to pull that chain, however it goes. All right, <laughs> now I know what that is. It's not working on us for us right now. Anyway, we got those two wires running down. I would figure one would be power and one, one would be ground, but why would you, you think you just ground somewhere off, off the, the body somewhere, right? The only other thing I could think of too is that it has this extra light on here, whether that's factory or not. Again, the bulbs burned out in it. I don't know if somebody put that on there. Yeah, there's a wire going to each one of those and then it's grounded to the base, so. That would probably pick power up, maybe off the horn. Maybe that was supposed to be, they have like those quick clips on it, right in there. Maybe that was on there and they unplugged it. Probably needs bulbs all the way around too. That one's definitely gone and got too hot. That probably needs a bulb and who knows about the headlight. Well, I think it's time that we take it off the lift Try putting it around, see what it does. Yeah, that's pretty crunchy though, huh? Or the worst part of the whole thing. It doesn't seem like it's affecting it right now. It's double wall, you know, this, there's this and then there's an internal one too, but still, may want to try to keep an eye out for a used rim. Get ready to throw the toolkit back in it. It's kind of laughing because basically have everything if you break down but it also has a dime. I believe that's a dime that's in there. I'm gonna go clean that up on a wire wheel. I guess if you broke down, you're able to use a payphone and call for help. Go clean it up, see what date it is. What, what do you think it is? I'm gonna say 1974. No cheating. And it is, still can't tell. I think it says 1967. Who guessed that, anybody? You know, it's bad when you gotta take a picture of it with your phone and blow it up. <laughs> Might be 57. It's, you can see the 57 or 67. We're gonna take a picture of it. I'm going with 1960 blah, 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 blah. 
I think it's 1967. Agree? Who won? You win the dime. Well, now are these fell off riding around, going over jumps. <laughs> Pretty snug. Left the foam in there, so. so everything right now is a sheet of ice outside, so we can't really ride too much. We can, we could try. Well, let's go try it here, see if we just at least fire it up the way it's supposed to run. And go from there. Choke, czar, throttle. Yeah, I gotta turn the choke off. Hmm. Probably should use a decompression belt too. Let's turn the choke off, see if we'll go. <laughs> what a dumb design. <laughs> Come to a stop, you gotta take it out of gear and hit and hit the brake throttle to stop it. But it does go. We need to go outdoors, you know. She's kinda funny. Now you funny too. So I'm hanging out with a friend of mine, this guy. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go use his uh, he's kind of like on a dead-end street so you don't have to worry about uh, anybody interrupting I don't know if the wind's gonna get us but we do a cold start on it and he hasn't even seen this thing yet yeah so here's the thing it's kind of like always in gear you got to take it out of gear and the throttle is backwards so when you let off the lever is full throttle and you, to make it idle, you will have to squeeze the lever. Yes, yes. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> so I'm going to go run it up and down and get it fired up and we'll go just see how it puts around and see what it does. Ah. You want a helmet? <laughs> there you go. All right. So we going to remember what I got to do. So full throttle is idle. Yes, it, it, it's like so.
it is kind of weird that you just let go and it goes. Oh, you maniac. So you got to squeeze the handlebar and idle. <laughs> Look how this is going to work out. Then to shut it off, you get his deep compression off, and it kills compression to the engine. Let's <laughs> wait for the wind to stop. <laughs> so I asked him if he wants to try it. No. <laughs> like the throttle is backwards. Everything's backwards. There's like a decompression situation. It, no. It's like the, all the safety is totally backwards from what it, what it should be. It's like a snowblower that stays going when you let go of the handlebars instead of vice versa. No wonder why it's got a big bumper on the front of it and everyone is missing. Yeah, it's been crashed. It does run pretty good though. For, you know, for what it is, I, I guess after you get used to it, it's not too bad. But you got to be able to take it out of gear while it's got full throttle going, while you're letting go of the lever and hit the decompression valve. So, but it survives. Came back good. William, I put two tires on it, two tubes in it, really. That's about it. Needs a couple of bulbs for some lights, I think. But, uh, Works out pretty good for the pile that it is. <laughs> Alright guys, it's cold out, it's raw, it's windy, and I'm going to go call it. But thanks for hanging out with us, have a little bit of fun, and uh, Brian and I may go play miniature frisbee, frisbee golf or something. <laughs> Perfect day for it at 20 mile an hour winds. Yeah. Alright guys, with that, signing off. Take care. Later. Yeah, I think you're supposed to hit like the decompression valve to get it going, and then let it go. Brad. Hey guys, how's it going? I got a reached out from Scott. Scott has this funky moped living what was it, in your mother-in-law's basement. Yeah. Let him tell a story. What's the backstory on it? Well, I, uh, my in-laws were from uh, England, and they, when they were in France uh, for a year or so, they rode around on these Velo Solex. So when my mother-in-law got when they got back, my mother-in-law. Um, decided she wanted to get one and there must have been a dealer in the area so she drove that around for a number of years and then they parked it 78 sat, you said yeah around 78 uh, there about so 46 years or so and uh and that was it last time it ran and it was like, kind of like a wet garage on the back of it and uh, see how much how funky it is from sitting but uh, we're gonna go either try to figure out what happened to it and hopefully if it survives we'll try to bring it back to life yeah. Thanks, God. Appreciate it. Welcome. All right, man.